Welcome back to the Gilded Bubble. This is Carrie, and today I'm gonna to make another one of my cat soaps. This one is going to be what is affectionately known in our house as a cow cat. And I'm gonna use a teal background with Mad Micah's Tahitian Teal, which is this lovely guy. And then my black and white are gonna be titanium dioxide and activated charcoal. And I'm going to scent it with Earl Grey Tea from Nature's Garden, which I have used before. And as I said, it does not smell like Earl Grey Tea to me. It smells I don't know, my mom said it smelled like an old like bookstore kind of smell, like old books, which I love that smell. So that explains why I like it, even though it does not smell like Earl Grey tea. All right, so I've got my lye solution with my salt water in it. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to this and then get it to just before trace or just at trace maybe. Um, and then what I'm gonna do when I blend up my white and my, um, my black is I'm gonna take them a little bit beyond that because that's the layer that I'm going to sculpt with my sculpting tool. Got a little bit of lint, nothing too bad. And today I'm just, I went ahead and did an ice bath on my lye. So it's actually, I'm soaping at about 108 degrees, give or take, however much it cooled off since I checked it. <laughs> um, I, uh, I like to not soak at room temperature because of the solid oils that I use. They tend to solidify and give me false trace or I get steric spots. So I like to keep it a little bit warmer. background layer. It's going to be the teal. So this will be about 16 ounces. And then this, I'm not going to evenly split this because I want a little more white than I have black, but not by a whole lot. It's basically going to be a black and white spotted. It's going to be a white cat with black spots. I'm not gonna split this exactly evenly. I think I'm gonna do about 10 ounces of black and that'll leave me with about, what is that? A little over a pound here in this guy for my white. So it's gonna make a nice rich black with that activated charcoal. Teal. Wait till you see this teal. Stir up the teal just a little before I... Oh, I love this color. I love this color. Hey, it matches the spatula. Such a good color. I just thought that'd be really a nice standout against the black and white of this. So we'll leave that because that's got to... That, that can. I want that to stay liquid as long as possible. And then I'm going to add my titanium dioxide to this one. I've already pre-dispersed this. It's about a teaspoon of it dispersed in a tablespoon of water. So it's going to add a little water to my batter, but not enough to really hurt or maybe even give me glycerin rivers, hoping, fingers crossed. And um, once I add the scent to this, I'm actually going to stick blend this just a little to get that white more dispersed because um, this actually needs to thicken up a little more for me. Same with my black here, because those two can thicken up. That's fine, because that's the layer I'm going to sculpt. And then I will put the rest of this fragrance into my teal when I'm ready to pour that. I'm not going to, I don't want it to thicken up too much, because that's where I'll get air pockets, and I don't want that. All right, let's blend you just a little bit. I might need a little more white in there. I don't know. 
this is the mixing song, the mixing song. No, it's not. I won't sing for you. Uh, I just had to uh, take the sound out so that I don't blow your ears out with the sound of my immersion blender. Um, but look at how great that soap is starting to look. But just you wait. It's going to turn into a hot, gloopy mess. Oh, yes, it is. You're going to love it. And I'm getting all kinds of air bubbles and everything in this batch. Oh, yes. But it turns out super cute in the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend this till it gets to about a medium trace and then I'll do my black and then it's gonna go right into the mold so we can sculpt it. And I've got to cover up the blender again. I should really not sing. Um, but yeah, mixing some more white soap, mixing that soap. Look at what I'm doing. Look at all those air bubbles. Oh my God, I should not even look. <laughs> oh no. This fragrance is pretty slow moving. It's actually, you know, I'm just now getting to a light trace. Um, and one of the reasons I'm tilting the bowl like this is I don't have quite enough batter in here to fully cover my stick blender. So I don't know if you can see those air bubbles in there. I'm trying to not incorporate too many of those. Yeah, so much for not tr not getting air bubbles. When I go to bang the soap mold out later, you'll see all them little bubbles popping. But hey, hey, I got it made. This soap is a soap. It will clean you. It smells really good. The colors are beautiful. Hey, I love it. You love it. Cats will love it. Don't, well, maybe don't wash your cat with it. Cats don't typically like to be bathed. And I'm also not sure if this would be 100% safe. I'm just getting air bubbles like crazy. I should have put this in a smaller picture. Oh well. Life goes on, eh? Now that is going to set up a little quicker just because I've got the titanium dioxide in there. That's always is going to make your soap set up quicker. So I'm going to leave this at about a medium trace here, even though I kind of want it more to heavy trace, thick trace, however you want to refer to that. Um, just because it's going to set up while I stick blend my black color. You see this guy's still really fluid. It's already got the fragrance in there, but it is going to stay really fluid for me. Hey yo, it's voiceover Carrie here to tell you that what happened here is I mix this forever and ever and ever and it never really sets up the way I want it to and then I play with it anyway and screw up my soap, air quotes around screw up, it turns out fine. Um, but this was one of my first times working with activated charcoal and only the, the, and it was actually the first time that I tried to do some kind of design with it and I didn't consider that it um, slows down your trace and I mixed this black forever and you'll see when I go to pour it that it stays really really runny and it does not get to the consistency that my titanium dioxide portion of the soap did and I regret that deeply but I do actually like the way this turned out and I'm definitely going to do this um, version of a cow cat again later but it got named rescue kitty because it looks like it has tipped ears like a TNR cat so there you go. And now, of course, to save you from the, I don't know, umpteen minutes I spent mixing this, I'm going to speed this up a little bit and talk over it. You can see how nice and thick the white is and how runny the black is. And at this point, I'm probably trying not to swear, um, but I've got the mixer going so you can't hear it. And I just, oh, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm just going to have to like rename my channel like carries soap fails or something maybe i'll maybe i'll go viral that way but good lord did this give me give me some freaking fits anyway back to your regularly scheduled soaping well, i'm gonna let that sit for a minute because i gotta start moving with this white because she is setting up so i am gonna start with that set this off to the side it should continue to thicken, but I'm gonna leave the stick blender in there just in case. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, I can just plop this in here because the design that I'm doing doesn't require me to do anything super, super intricate. So as long as I shake my air bubbles out, she's gonna work just fine. So the fact that it's this thick, this is actually a really great consistency. And um, I don't think I filmed when I did my calico one. So I might have to post a picture of that for you to see, but this is gonna come out with good spotty looking kind of stuff. So it's gonna look very much like a white cat 
with good amounts of black on it. We have two of those. Let's see if I can find a photo to throw in there. Yeah, I'm gonna stick blend this just a little bit more. I mean, the cats are cute, right? But I muted it again because more stick blending on the black layer to try to make this soap look like my cats. Um, it does not look like my cats. I'm gonna redo this one. But um, yeah, Gus and Mimu, I'm sorry that I uh, <laughs> did this to you. It is not meant to honor you, and yet it is. They both have ear tips because originally they were going to be TNRs, and they moved into our house and wouldn't leave. And now we love them to pieces. Okay, that's a little bit better. I think I'll stop there. It doesn't have to be the same consistency because this will just kind of fall to fill in the holes. So you don't have to be perfect with it. However, this black is gonna get everywhere because it's charcoal, not mica. And my stick blender was starting to get hot, so I did not wanna keep working with that. So we're just gonna see how it turns out. If it doesn't go the way we want it, well, it'll just be a little different. I feel like I say this every time I record, but I've not done this particular design yet, so I don't know how exactly it's gonna come out, but I do have a rough idea. So I wanna make sure I get a little bit of black in each bar. And then I'm gonna go back and keep adding my white right on top. I hate that this, I gotta get a new mold for doing this though, cause this mold is bowing out in weird ways and I don't like it. And I can't get it to work with the Vaseline anymore. I don't have any clips to hold it in, so. Gotta work with what you got. Girl, if this isn't a lesson in, in working with what you got, I don't know what is. That is a gloopy mess and you know it's not gonna turn out and you're lying through your teeth while you're recording. And I'm really basing this off of one of my cats because she, oh goodness, there I go making a mess. She is mostly white with just little bits of black here and there. Um, and then we have her brother, which was from the same litter, and he has a little more black on her than she does, but not a whole lot. So I'm really kind of basing this off of them. Gus has a little white tip on his tail. It's so cute. We had a cat with a white tip on her tail when I was growing up. So I just really, I don't know, I just think that's super cute. So I'm almost out of my white, so the top of this is going to turn out with more black in it than the bottom did, but that's all right. And then what I'm going to do is beat it down like that. And I actually have little marks in here that show me where I am for um, my scraping, and this actually is up past those, so I don't really have to put any more soap in there than that. Because that's going to get scraped off. So what I need to do then, I wish I had something to clip that with. Oh, I see people use binder clips, but I don't have any. I don't have any binder clips. So I just put my overage in little small candy molds. Um, and what's nice is this guy is still so nice and fluid. I can just pour him straight in and he's going to, I'm going to use him and these little guys. Let me show you this. So I've got these little cat shaped ones and they're actually really hard to use because usually by the time you have leftover soap it's a little too firmed up and it doesn't get into all the little tiny crevices like its little tail here but this is liquid enough that it'll go in there a little bit better so I'm hoping that'll fill it all in but you got to be real careful about getting it into those too I think this is a perfect example of why I stopped talking while I'm recording because I'm over here trying to make lemonade out of some really gross lemons and like I said, with these little extra bits, I usually do them as giveaways. So anytime that you order from me, if you order two bars or more, um, you're gonna get a little gift. And they're usually little guest-sized or hand-sized soaps. Or sometimes you get um, a full bar in terms of its width and everything. It's just not as thick. So my bars are about an inch thick and, and the samples are anywhere from a quarter to a half inch thick. Um, and those I'll usually give to the larger orders. So you essentially get a free soap whenever you order and then I also give them away as samples anytime I you know somebody wants to know more about my business or like the couple of local vendors that I work with I've given them the little soaps as a you know here try it out let me know what you think 
kind of thing. This is going to go everywhere. I just spilled it all over the table. Well, at least you're owning up to your mistakes now, Carrie. But as usual, I'm over here making a big old mess. That's the only downside to these. Like, they just are super, super messy. You can see how much soap I'm just leaving behind here on the table because they're so little. They're intended for candy molds and, or, you know, for candy, and you can just pour that. Soap doesn't act quite like chocolate or other candy type substances. So, this might be the end of this particular tablecloth. But I am moving my soap. Uh, operation. I have a, a spare bedroom in my house. I'm going to move that um, and I'm going to have a space dedicated to soap making so I won't have to really worry about this stuff as much. Um, I won't have to put down a um, cloth every time I go to soap. I probably don't have to, you know, um, but we have brand new countertops and I just don't like the idea of this happening to my brand new surfaces in my kitchen so that's why I do this all right we'll see how this guy's setting up really I'm just thinking about that black the black's the one I'm really concerned with uh, the other soap the white soap is more than set up enough to, sc to sculpt hallelujah I found a clip there's a chip clip sitting here so I guess we're not using that for chips anymore <laughs> Once you use something for soap making, it gets lye on it. You can't really use it for other stuff. All right, let's check my black. That might actually hold. Let's try that and see what happens. I'm going to give my top layer a stir just to keep it a little more fluid. It's doing okay, though. So if I sculpt quickly, I should be all right. Let's see how this goes. Man, it's voiceover Carrie again. Watch how this just, oh, look at that. My white pulls, the black is still too fluid, and I can't even let you listen to the original audio because I'm over here making excuses and be like, oh, it'll be fine. Girl, it ain't going to be fine. It's going to be okay, but it isn't going to be what you wanted. And here I am trying to desperately salvage it. Uh, I have no words. So I had to let it sit a little bit longer and then I came back to sculpt it again, which I'll skip ahead to so you're not sitting here watching soap sit on the counter for 20 minutes. And here I go messing with it again. It looks like a, it looks, I cannot believe it turned out as well as it did re-watching this footage of me playing in the mud here. It's the only way I can describe this. I mean, I have, what am I even doing? Carrie, stop. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to continue to voice over this because this was a long, long period of me trying to salvage this while my mom tried to wash the soap dishes. And uh, here I'm just taking my excess and putting it in another candy mold because, you know, I mean, you can just tell by looking at that, the two different consistencies. It's like trying to mix together pudding and juice. Like, <laughs> I just have like liquid and gloop and neither one wants to cooperate with me. You can see here though, as I scrape it, like I am getting a good definition of color. So the gloopiness of the white and the liquid of the black did help me there, but that's about it. I mean, I cannot believe knowing what this struggle was, that it turned out as good as it did. I think the best part was I took a lot of that really gross looking black off the top and that really gave me that clear um, white portion <laughs> along the bottom there. Well, in the middle. But yeah, so I went ahead and scooped out what I didn't need and uh, tried to get that out of the way so that I could finish sculpting it, clean it up just a little. Although, you know me, I'm messy. Look at all that crap everywhere. Crap. It's soap. It's not gonna it's not going to hurt anything as long as I don't stick my bare hands in it, you know. But, uh, wow. I've gotten a little better, though, at cleaning off the scraper as I go, and it does help. So I might have to film yet another cat soap video so you can watch me not be this awful at it. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I am just a one-woman disaster machine trying to make soap. That's really what's going on here. And now back to the thrilling footage of me trying to salvage it. So my end pieces on these always turn out a little bizarre looking, but you know, we just cut them off, make samples out of them. Nobody ever knows. They just look like weird little critters instead of kitties. I'm going to just do this one last swipe. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour in my background color, which is still fluid enough. It'll work. Do this little bit of cleanup. It's thickening up, but it's yeah, that charcoal just slowed down my trace a whole lot. So this is okay though. This will go in just nicely. I'm gonna do it. I might have to do it like this to keep those from breaking. 
I've got to keep my cat ears intact. So I'll fill this little river here first in between the ears. Surprisingly, that didn't collapse those ears. I'm actually just talking here because I was just heavy breathing into the microphone. So I thought maybe you'd prefer to hear me again instead of that. And if they get rounded off, then it's a bear. <laughs> I'm trying to do quite a few of these cat soaps. And I think I said this in my last video where I did the little orange tabby cats. Um, I have a partnership with a local cat cafe that um, is partnered with a rescue in our area that does a lot of great work with cats and kittens and um, Trap Neuter Return, which is um, where you capture community strays and have them spayed or neutered and then return them to their community. And that stops, to, um, that stops the spread of disease um, and also the exponential growth of cat community so there aren't a ton of strays in your neighborhood. Um, and the one locally that the Cat Cafe, which is Witty Whisker, they're partnered with Murphy's Kittens, and I'll link to those um, in the description. Um, but if, you know, I'm in St. Augustine, Florida, if you are somewhere else in the country, um, most areas have some sort of um, TNR uh, effort, or if not, there's, you can start one. Um, I will link to Alley Cat Allies, which will show you areas that have, that will show you where in your area you can get assistance if you'd like to trap and spay or neuter cats in your area and then have them returned to your community. All right, I got to clean this up, but I'm going to beat it down just to make sure I get my air bubbles out and it falls into all those little cracks. Got some good air bubbles going there. I'm gonna clean up the edge of this just so that it's not sitting like that in a mold and getting soap everywhere. And then I will come back and cut this. And you though, I have to wait 24 hours. You'll get to see it in three, two. Y'all, I'm so sad. I broke the wires on this cutter and I have yet to fix it. So I'm watching myself cut this. And I'm just gonna have a little tear, pour one out from my cutter that I need to fix. It's pretty easy to do. I just being lazy about not fixing it, but I just love how even these come out when it's cut. And even a soap that I really, like this one, that I wasn't really completely 100% satisfied with, it's so lovely to use this cutter. I mean, look at, oh, everything exactly the same size. Oh, I miss it. And look, see, he's missing an ear. So I decided to call these a TNR or a Rescue Kitty and, uh, you know, it just, that goes right back to the rescue. These are, these are actually in stock at Woody Whisker. I have, I think I have a couple left in the online shop as well. They turned out cute. I can't complain. I love that teal background. It's so pretty. And I like the little bit of marbling in there. It doesn't look exactly like a cat's pattern is. Oh, it looks like my Gus with his ear clipped. Um, but, but it, it, it looks like a cat. I mean, I can't, can't get too mad. The other thing too that I didn't consider was by using that charcoal, that's gonna leave kind of a gray lather when you use it. So anytime you're using a charcoal soap, don't get worried. Uh, that won't stain, but it will kind of leave a little bit of a residue on like your washcloth or whatever, but it'll come right out. So that's never anything to worry about. Gosh, I forgot how cute this one was. And it does smell really good. But there were a few that were missing some ears. But, you know, hey, it still looks... that. See, that does not look like a cat. That looks like mountains. <laughs> I think I ended up giving that one away as a sample because of that. Um, as you can see, my other two little ends there are samples too. Those do look like mountains. And I dropped it. Anyway, get ready to see it all cleaned up and photographed. <music> watching this video. Did you like it? Would you mind hitting that thumbs up for me? Or maybe you'd like to leave a comment. Tell me if you'd like the soap, you didn't like it, you think I should make something else next time, and if you loved it, if you really loved it, hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching.